Welcome to another episode of the, uh, the Cornerstone Church Kingston podcast series. We are working our way through the Pilgrim's Progress and uh, it's great to have you joining us and uh, cornerstonechurchkingston.org. Uh, if you didn't find this podcast on that site, you can go to that site and you can look up various articles and blogs. We preached a sermon series through this book some years ago, which you can access and download. Um, but uh, we're, we are uh, working our way through and last time in the last episode, uh, we saw that uh, Christian's good companion, Faithful, uh, was true to his name and was faithful to the end. And uh, it was a, you know his, his life was taken. He was martyred um, and taken from this world because of his uh, faithful testimony. And um, Christian has uh, been left without his companion. Uh, and yet there, there is another one who's joined him. So where one was taken, another was given. And Hopeful has, has come to, to walk along with him on this road to heaven. And we're picking up the story now with Christian and Hopeful uh, as they continue on the narrow path. And um, shortly after leaving Vanity Fair, they, they see someone up ahead, don't they, on, on the road. And they, they, uh, they sort of, do they hurry up to him? or uh, Yeah, they, him or they overtake him. They as overtake him. As a, yeah. yeah, and then a, a, a new conversation begins. And if you're new to this series, this happens all the time in Pilgrim's Progress, this these sort of long, drawn-out conversations, which are so helpful, really, with, with different people on the road. And this is a, a man called Mr. By Ends. Uh, does someone want to have a go at defining that and then explaining how the conversation is going? Well, it's, it's sort of like, um, by all means, or I, I, I'll do anything to get the end result sort of stuff, mm-hmm. isn't it? It's something like that, isn't it? Um, yeah, he 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 does. He, he'll follow religion when it's easy, as we we'll see. Uh, um, uh, in order to you know, every, everything's got to be happy with silver slippers on. And yeah, all, yeah. Is it like sort of bypass or by? Because yeah, later on they go down bypath meadow, don't they? And yeah. And it's it's doing what is needed to take the easiest route, almost, isn't it? You, yeah. you know, if that field looks easier than the road, well, let's go through the field, yeah. the by, take the byway sort of thing. And but he, but, but he's, it, because his end is comfort, his end is, yeah. is pleasure, really, and so he'll do any anything to keep up the pleasure, as it were, and feel good about himself. Yeah. That's okay. It. So how, how, does the, how does the conversation get going then? Is it, because we've seen a lot, it follows quite a similar pattern on it, doesn't it? It's who are you? Where are you from? What are you doing? Isn't it? It's that kind of thing. Yeah, it's quite similar. It's what what country are you from and how far are you travelling in this direction? And what, what is your name? But Bayens won't say his name. He keeps hiding it until Christian sort of works it out, really. Mm. Christian's a little bit suspicious of him because he won't say his name. Well, I mean, the suspicion starts when he doesn't, as you say, he doesn't say his name straight away, but he says, I'm from the town of Fair Speech mm. and I'm going to the Celestial City. So I'm going to the same place as you blokes, but uh, I'm from the town of Fair Speech. And Christian says... From fair speech, is there any good that lives there? Which you know suggests a bit like uh, it's not the best place in the world. No. And then he reels off all his sort of relatives and people he's close to from fair speech, and they're just terrific names like Lord Turnabout. Um, in other words, he's not going to stick at anything if it if it, it causes yeah. pain. There's Lord Time Server, um, uh, and then Lord Fair Speech, uh, obviously. The town's named after him, Mr. Smooth Man. <laughs> I, I love this one, Mr. Facing Both Ways. Mm. You know, <laughs> you know, he, he's your he's your vicar of Bray, isn't he? Mm. Like you, you. And then uh, Mr. Anything, um, and Mr. Two Tongues, mm. uh, and uh, all all of these these sort of fantastic names. And um, they're all they're all sort of relations to him, and 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 they've all become very wealthy. Yeah, which is why they're called what they're called. It's yeah. their ways of making their riches. My, my favourite one um, is a great grandfather who was a waterman. It yeah. says, you know, he, he obviously worked on the water. Uh, who uh, looking one way and rowing the other. Yeah. I just think that what an amazing image that is. So uh, you know, he's pretending to be looking to heaven in in this sense, isn't he? He's, it looks like it, but he's actually going the complete opposite way. It's it's fantastic picture of of hypocrites and people that don't really believe, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Okay, so that's his heritage. 
Yeah. That's where he's from, that's the company he keeps and the relatives that he's got. So that, as it always does in Pilgrim's Progress, is quite a large clue as to what this individual is <laughs> like. He's married as well. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> well, he's married uh, to the daughter of Lady Fainy. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. you know, pretending. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Who, who, okay. has a, who has a high level of breeding? <laughs> Carries herself yeah. impeccably to both prince and peasants. And most zealous about religion uh, when the tide is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so how does his own doctrine expose itself then? What, 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 do, what do they move to next after that? Well, well, I think um, Peach just started to talk about it. They say, yes, we're religious, but our religion generally differs in, in two ways. So the first thing is that we never strive against the wind and tide. So wherever the the feeling of the world is going, that's the way we go. And then secondly, we are always very fervent in following religion as a person. So he personifies religion who parades silver slippers. We love to walk with him in the street when the sun shines and the people applaud him. In other words, when religion looks attractive, we will go with it. When it's got the applause and, and the things that yeah. can give us gain, we will go with religion. Mm. That's, that's, a, that's a big thing, isn't it? Mm. So they're not, I mean, he's not, they're not um, necessarily ashamed to identify with Christ, um, providing that they are living in a culture which won't give them too many problems for doing that. So um, they, they, use, they use their religion in order to get what they need from the world yeah. and ditch it when it's not going to be helpful for them. Yeah. Um, so Jesus, you could say, is not is not an end in himself. He's a means to an end. Mm. He's, a, he's a way of yeah. it's... getting what you need. Uh, but when he's not convenient, then he can be, yeah, it's that kind of thing. It sort of reminds you of Jesus' teaching, doesn't it, when he says you cannot serve um, mammon. Material things yeah. and and me, yeah, kind of two masters. That, yeah. yeah, but Jesus is clear on what he says. Yeah. One will serve the other. Mm. Uh, so you're either going to follow money and and let Jesus, if you want him, religion to serve my God of money, or I can use money to serve. Christ. I mean, it, it is interesting though. Uh, yeah, you know, <clears throat> that's absolutely right, and I think that's all right. Um, uh, right in what they're believing, but. Jesus and Christ are not mentioned at all, as far as I can remember in this. It's mm. religion. It's only religion. So there's mm. no heart following of Christ here, is there? <coughs> uh, there's no conversion. There's no, we love the Lord Jesus. It's all about uh, yeah. religion. And, and religion can be really heady, can't it? Uh, you know, can't it? In, in, in certain... Um, in certain places, if you're a religious man, you're honoured, you're called reverend, the right reverend, you know, you've got titles and a position, and uh, lots of people applaud that and sort of think that you're something special because, you know, you wear the right garb or whatever. And, and yeah. there are times where, you know, to be a religious person is, is someone with power and respect and authority and... Uh, all, all of the sort of glorious things that go with the, the clothing and the position and, and platforms that you have. Yeah, mm. that's right. And I mean, the, this idea of um, going with the wind and the tide, I think, was very, it is, is you do very much see in, in religion. So it's as if they, they lick their finger and put it up in the wind mm. and they try to sense which way the wind is blowing. Mm. And then they want to be in line with that, or at least to show that their religion is compatible with that. You know, so if the big push in the culture is yeah. uh, we need to do all we can to you know save this creation, and uh, the church has always been about this, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stand behind this. This is our big doctrine. Um, if that's what the world is passionate about. Well, they'll try to incorporate that and show that we're always about that too. Yeah. Um, or if it's some justice issue or some gender issue or whatever it is, they it, it wants to sort of show, move with the times, not be offensive, not rub up against anything. It wants to lose the, the sort of prophetic edge that you might find mm. in, in the Bible. It doesn't want to speak against things which might make it unpopular. Yeah. It wants to go, show that it can go with, you know. Um, and you very often see that. So they... they at the same time, with state religion, you know, it maintains 
some of its religion, the silver slippers of the kind of the dress and the candles and the formality and the liturgy. Yeah, well, when, when you saw the... the but that's the, all inoffensive, isn't it? Yeah, when you saw the, 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 the coronation, or, I mean, it's glorious, yeah. isn't it? All of the hats and the gold and the, yeah. the robes. I mean, who, who can beat that? It's, you know, in, in the world you saw that. And yeah. It's one of those glorious sort of parades, isn't it? And mm. processions and things, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but the doctrine, the doctrine has gone over mm. because they want to be seen to be going with the wind and the tide. Um, and, and, you know, we may not want to get into this too much, but it, it often has the exact opposite effect of what they desire because mm. I think people look at it and think it's, it's, a, it's a blander, less relevant mm. version of what I already hear in the world. So why, why would I go to the church to hear about these issues when my other the people in the world speak about them with so much more passion and conviction and you know so mm. it doesn't even work really when it comes to winning people um, so although when they argue I don't know whether well I am jumping ahead but um, he's joined by others that we'll probably see in a minute but when they argue the arguments are quite good aren't they mm. because they say that God sends uh, uh, the wind and the rain, and he sends the you know yes. the, the sun and the warmth, mm. and he says oh so <coughs> so uh, you know even the bee the bee will stay in if it's raining or you know, there's some sort of argument yeah. like this isn't yes. there, um, and we're mad to go out in the rain because God's you know that's the time to stay at home and shut down the doors and you know stay in and not go out and get wet. Uh, but God will send the sun and then we go out and we walk in the sun yeah. and they're using scripture it sounds quite good yeah. doesn't it yeah it does but, uh, but that, and those are good illustrations for what they're trying to describe but those are not how Jesus actually describes <laughs> no. Christians so no. it's importing an illustration which works in its level but it's not one that illustrates being a Christian so no and it's not even what those verses are about no, are yeah, yeah. it was Jesus says you know if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And although to follow Christ will mean homes, mothers, brothers, sisters, he also says, and along with them, persecutions. Mm. So uh, there is lots of sunshine and gift to be enjoyed in following Christ, but with that comes persecution. And you to follow him is to walk through them all. Um, and even to know his blessing in the rain. That's when he's going to grow you and refine you and so on. Um, why does he keep his name then? So, so when they first meet, he, he doesn't say that. Well, why do you think... Well, after, after he says those two things, Christian works out that it is Bayens. He says, oh, this yeah. is Bayens. We, yeah. we know who he is. And he says, are you this, are you this man? And he says, that's a nickname uh, given to me. But... Uh, I can just, I just have to put up with it, uh, just as other good men have done before me. So it's, I don't, it, it, maybe he's trying to hide his sort of hypocritical, sort of double. He doesn't like the name. No. 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 And then Christian and Hopeful sort of step back and chat to each other, and Christian says, I know this man, this is by ends, and, you know, he's not to be trusted, and we really sh shouldn't really be walking with him, and that sort of stuff. And then you find out about his um, school. Yeah, well, before that, though, it's, it's interesting because he, he says, look, I'll, I'll travel alongside you. I, I'm not as bad as what these men that you've heard, the, the stories you've heard about. Uh, but, but Christian says, well, if you want to follow us, you, you must do what, you, what Tom's been talking about. You must also embrace religion in his rags mm. as well as when he wears his silver slippers. So in the good and the bad, you've got to follow... follow um, uh, Christianity, follow the Lord Jesus, um, and you have to go against the wind and tide. And he says, "I will not be, I will not be coerced. You will not force me to do this. I have my freedom to live this way. I, I, I will not abandon my long-held principles because they're number one, they're harmless. Number two, they're profitable. Um, so I, I, I refuse to do that. And that's when Christian and hopeful will move on ahead. Mm. Uh, and that's uh, a little bit later on. That's where, uh, as you said, Mr. Byens is uh, is is joined by his friends. Yeah. So 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 they walk ahead, <coughs> don't they, of Mr. Byens, and yeah. then Mr. Byens' companions. Well, no, no, but just, just before, before that, they talk about his 
I think this is, this is quite good. They talk about his schooling, don't they? No, the friends yeah. come who are part of his school, and then they talk about what the school was that they were oh, in. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but the schoolmaster school is quite... Mm. Yeah. So, 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 how, so that's just... A, then they... So Bayens is talking with his friends. Yes. And that Bunyan's just recorded that for us, or has Hopeful overheard that or something, or is it... I think they're, they're, they're at a little bit of a distance. These three friends join up with Mr. Yeah. Byans. I don't know if they're meant to hear it, but then their names are Mr. Hold the World, yeah. Mr. Money Love, and Mr. Save All. And so we get a, a, a sort of, you sort of straight away we're seeing that these are very much of the same uh, mould as Mr. Byans. And then we see the school. And what, been to the, this is what I was trying to get. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But they've been to the school and the. The, head, uh, the headmaster is Mr. Gripe Man. Yeah, um, in Love Gain. Uh, in, in, in a t sort of town in, in, in Love Gain. And then he, he taught them the art of violence and flattery and lying and putting on a guise of religion. Um, uh, yeah, they were, they were well taught in those things, which is... Which is so, so much so that they could also be headmasters of their own schools, schools. of the same type, that, that they know how to get the stuff by any means necessary. Mm. And, and that word gripe in, its, in the usage here is someone who, who takes or seizes something by force or grabs something. And so his, his lesson um, uh, or his curriculum has been, you know, th this is what you need to do. You need to take the best for yourselves. Do what you can to keep what you need at all costs, really. So that's that they must seize the world and lay hold of the world and keep the world. Mm. Um, and so they've all been indoctrinated by, by that. Um, and so that fits with the same all, um, which, you know, sounds like it could be a universalist, but it's, it, it, I think it really means here someone who saves all that they can mm -hmm. and doesn't want to... Yeah. Have a cost or lose anything on behalf of religion. Um, yeah, I mean the school is in the, uh, uh, is in Love Gain, which is a market town in the county of Coverton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so good, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So that's so that's so by so by ends is joined with money, money, love, and uh, and then they start talking. Yeah. And save all, and they start talking. And, and they then start talking about Christian and hopeful, don't they? Yeah. Um, Why are they ahead? Yes. If they're going on this pilgrimage, yes. shouldn't we be with them? Yes. Uh, and then they sort of start to discuss uh, why, and they, and they think they're they're on Mr. Bayen's uh, on his. On his side, they're far too rigid. Um, it means they judge people. They're headstrong, um, and they see it as ridiculous. It's interesting um, when Mister Hold the World uh, hears about them that the fact that they would have religion with rags, not just silver slippers like us. He says, "Hold on a moment. Um, I can only consider him a fool who has the freedom to keep what he has, but is so unwise as to lose it." Which is like the complete opposite to what. Jesus says, isn't it? It's like, actually, the fool is the one who keeps everything and loses his soul. And the, the Christian is the one who forsakes all to, to win his soul. Yeah. Um, and we were, I mean, we're recording this on the, the 2nd of October, but on the first Sunday evening, 1st of October, we were looking at one of Jesus' parables, the Pearl of Great Price. Um, and that, that, that critical doctrine about being a Christian, they've completely misunderstood uh, or deliberately rejected which is that actually to find Christ and to follow Christ is to gain mm. the most precious, valuable treasure that anybody could ever have. Mm. Um, so precious is it that you are willing to gladly uh, sell all that you have. That's what he does. He sells all that he has in his joy. It's a joy for him to leave everything behind because he's found something so much better. And they just can't see how that would be true because... They haven't discovered the real value of Christ, and so of course it sounds it sounds nuts to potentially lose good stuff in this world, uh, yeah, you know, because they haven't seen a superior treasure, basically. Mm. Um, well, that's why I, I I think that Bunyan's kept this Christ list. There's, there's no Christ in mm. this. Mm. It's all religion and all this stuff, isn't it? They haven't. If they saw Christ, they would see this is all just this rubbish, as as Paul says. But they haven't seen Christ. They're, they're, they're thinking of their religion and their uprightness in this world. 
And so their argument is like, well, look at Abraham, Abraham and Solomon. They got rich through mm. religion. And look at Job, who, who, you know, a good man shall store up gold as dust. Like, he'll have all this gold. And so they're, they're pointing to... It's very much what the prosperity gospel mm. guys do, isn't it? It's, it's like, uh, uh, let's pick and choose what verses we want to try and justify the fact that we want to get rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why, you know, a careful reading of the Bible in all of these cases just, just knocks those arguments for six, really. Because you look at something like Hebrews 11, and you say, yeah, okay, there were, there were a few rich folk in mm. there. There were also some who were sort of <laughs> yes. absolutely nothing, uh, who were destitute, mm. walking around in rags. Um, and the whole point of that is, yeah, the Lord in his providence does ordain people to different levels of comfort and materialism in this world. Mm. But, n- but just because there have been some well-off saints doesn't mean that's a promise for all saints. You know, there are some who will be... Uh, poor and that, that's down to the Lord's dis- discretion isn't it mm. it's not it's not a promise of, of following the Lord that we will have those things um, yeah yeah, so they, they um, then have these questions to try and prove that they're right. So it's the one, the, the minister of religion who will give up his, uh, some of his principles oh, yes. to, get a, yeah. to get a bigger congregation and to get more money in his... In his he's uh, a wise pro- person. And they, yeah, that, their answer to that is he's wise. It's yes. actually godly to do this. Because God's brought it providentially, yes. this opportunity for a bigger church. Yes. Mm. Therefore, he needs to compromise to go to it. Without yeah. questioning his conscience. <laughs> his God given him his conscience. Yeah. But, but this, I mean, this isn't unreal, is it? No. <laughs> I mean, you know, we've met people, we've mm. known people that uh, will join a religious organisation and yep. they, they, they say they don't agree with mm. what it believes in and and they won't talk to the bishop about it. They'll hide their evangelicalism. Mm. And they don't talk to the bishop. In order it's to not prudent to, to, to be so candid if you think there's a goal worth reaching. Yes. In other words, you can sort of say, well, if I, if I just sort of cover this part of what I believe in shadow for now, then it might mean I get a building from which I can preach the gospel. Yes. Um, so there's a kind of an end in sight but I guess the caution there is anything that would actually require you to compromise your faith uh, to think that that you can just sort of casually do that and then be okay for the rest of your life I think it reveals a seed of something that needs dealing well, with you, you know? we are to be as wise as, as, as serpents, serpents yeah. and as innocent as stuff what, how would we argue that then? Because so, I think that some of them would say, oh, no, I'm being as wise as a serpent here. Mm. I'm not revealing that I'm an evangelical so I can get to be part of this denomination mm. Mm. and then I'll be able to preach the gospel. What, what's the difference here? Yeah, I mean, to be as wise as a serpent, I, I, I think just means to apply biblical wisdom to situations, doesn't it? So uh, you, you look at the situation in front of you and you... you do, you do what is do what is wise, um, but I don't think Jesus is wanting to sort of open up and give a general license for people <laughs> to sort of compromise on on real truth when they need to. Now it is true that you 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 can be honest in situations without revealing everything that you know. Um, it doesn't immediately make you a dishonest liar to not say everything that you know. But I think we would all have to say that if you were asked about something specifically, mm. you know, um, then you you can't fudge it. But, you know, you, you have to give a give a give a good Christian answer and leave the decision to the Lord. Don't you? Uh, yes, and the context of wiser serpents is about set being sent out yeah. as yeah. sheep yeah. amongst wolves to mm. tell people about Jesus, and the literally the next verse is be on your guard you'll be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. Mm-hmm. So there's a level of persecution that's coming your way, which doesn't fit with their, mm-hmm. their, their, their theology of uh, yeah. be wise as a serpent so you can get as rich as possible. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, it's interesting because with the, with what you see with these characters is that they, they want to deliberately talk about the contentious issues. <laughs> so it might be that you're, you're in an interview and you're just thinking, OK, well, I'm not going to lie. I just really hope it doesn't come up. Mm-hmm. I just hope it doesn't come up. I think these guys would say, I'm going to bring it up. Yes. Um, <laughs> because I want to see what the difference is here. Is there real fellowship here or not? You know, um, so they're... Yeah, so that's another approach to it. But it's just amazing how they try and argue it. Like, so you've seen the... 
Um, the desire, the fact that he's been called is a godly thing, is providential. Uh, the desire for a larger congregation makes him a more earnest and a more studious preacher. Mm. It's just incredible. Like, he's going to improve himself. Doesn't God want us to improve ourselves? And then the third reason is... Um, uh, that he's got to be self-denying because he's denying his principles and self-denial <laughs> is such a good <laughs> quality. And That's it shows you, it shows he has a sweet and winning demeanour and he proves he's more qualified for the ministerial office, which is like the man has no convictions and you're trying to twist it to sound like he does. He's self-denying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and so obviously they, they're trying to say that a, a pastor who gives up on his principles of of um, what the Bible says is, is actually good to get the to the get the rich of the world. And then he goes on to address a tradesman who can't get any work, and for him to take up religion to then get financial gain to get profitable is also a, a, a good thing. Uh, or if he marries a, a rich woman, that's a good thing. Uh, so yeah. uh, that's it's, what I mean. In all of this, religion is is used as a means to an end, isn't it? That, that, that's the thing. You, you've got to do whatever is necessary to get on in the world and to have the most comfortable life that you can. And if religion will serve you in that end, then great, why wouldn't you use it? But at the point where it starts to make things difficult, it, it needs to be jettisoned, basically. Yeah. So, but so in their heads, they're now like we've answered we've Christian, this. we've got Christian hope for, we've Let's got him. Yeah. So yeah. lads, come back. We yeah. we we've just got a question for you to see what you. Yeah. And, and in their heads, it's a bit like the Pharisees when they come to Jesus, thinking, "Oh, we've got we've got them here. We can trap them and show them that they're wrong and we're right." And, and they uh, go through all of their rehearsal of their arguments of yeah. why. Uh, they're right, and then Christian just demolishes it. <laughs> well, it's so good. Yeah. It's so with, good. With Bible, 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 isn't it? Yes. Well, yeah. the way he starts, because they think it's so good, because they think they're really clever. They've come up with a, a, a world-beating argument, yeah. and Christian doesn't hesitate to answer. He says, "Even a babe in religion could answer ten thousand questions such as this one, yeah. <laughs> for it is unlawful to to follow Christ for loaves of bread." Um, and then, yes, you, as you say, it's Bible, Bible. Well, and the reason you know babes uh, or children can do this are these are all just Sunday school stories, aren't mm, they? Yeah. And you should know these stories from the Bible, and it's one after the other after the other to show, you know, that they're just wrong. Yeah. Um, the hypocrite, you know, the Pharisees, the hypocrites, the Judas, and yeah, uh, Simon, the 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 um, sorcerer, sorcerer yeah. bloke, and. All, all after, all using religion for money. And, yeah, he's uh, trying to bind the Holy Spirit, isn't he? Yeah. So that he can have a successful ministry, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that is the argument, isn't it? Which is, which is sort of nails it, really. It does, and he's, he's saying, look, what you've done is heathenish, hypocritical and devilish, and your reward will be according to your works, is, is Christian's final words to him. Yeah. And with that, there is silence. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's yeah. a thing to say, isn't it? Have you ever said anything like that to anyone? Uh, <laughs> well, no, I don't really know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not sort of stacked up or something like that. No. No. <laughs> yeah, next time I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tried to once. Do you remember that occasion? I better not say what, what it was. But it was a man not un not unsimilar to the name of the writer of this organisation. Uh, uh, <laughs> and his wife went mad, didn't she? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you know it sounded like he was joining an organisation that he really shouldn't do mm. because of just to get on in life. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a great. They don't know how to respond, um, and even hopeful. It is so like impressed by Christian's answer that he doesn't say anything so there's this weighty silence that yeah. falls upon everybody um and then I've forgotten how it ends. Well, well, they then they suddenly they find a, a, a slower pace. It's more comfortable for them as as yeah. Christian and hopeful go ahead. But Christian says something really good afterwards. He's he saying, "Look, if if they can't stand my sentence, yeah. how how will they answer when?" Yes. when the sentence of God, how will they deal with the, the sentence of God? And if they don't know how to answer someone like me, who's just a vessel of clay, how are they going to, 
how are they how are they do when they're rebuked by the flames of the devouring devouring fire and it's quite a sobering thing look they've they've been exposed here they've tried to be clever but they've been exposed that actually there is folly in in just living for riches uh, and so the, they could have done what with the hefty weight? Okay, actually, I need to change. But actually, they've gone, actually, we want to keep hold of this. Like the rich man, when Jesus says, you know, sell everything and come and follow me. Well, they, they're they like them. They just lag back, turns away, goes away sad, but doesn't do anything about it. Well, these are just, they see them as just sort of fundamentalist nutters mm. uh, that are, you know, they're just crazy, crazy people. Mm. And uh, they're the they're the ones in the wrong, even though they've just named all the scriptures to to show their point of view. Yeah. Right. So that's it. They're off. And um, yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. And uh, lot lot as ever, lots of kind of encouragements there and cautions uh, for us to, to to heed and think about. Um, if you do have any feedback about these podcasts, uh, we, we'd love to hear it. If you want to. Uh, pop us an email, uh, you can do so via the church website, cornerstonechurchkingston.org. Uh, if you've got any, any questions or things you'd like us to consider covering in future series, um, then, then please let us know. And uh, if these have been in any way helpful to you and you think that they'd be useful for other Christians or people in your life, then you can uh, share them too. Um, but do tune in for the, for the next episode of Pilgrim's Progress.